as we begin to touch on some of the basics of Roman law, a vast and unwieldy system of law that's extremely technical and complex, and from which we want to just draw some of the most basic principles, some of the most basic ways that it approaches the problem of justice. Let's think about Roman law in terms of status and contract. Let's think about Roman law through the paradigm that was created by one of the great 19th century historians of law, an English jurist named Henry Sumner Main. In 1861, Henry Sumner Main published a book called The Ancient Law. Main was himself extremely learned in Roman law, and he was part of a culture that was beginning to think historically about ancient law in particular, and about the nature of ancient societies and the differences between ancient and modern societies. Maine had a very particular viewpoint on this problem in that he was not just a scholar isolated in the ivory tower at Oxford. Maine had a very particular viewpoint on the distinction between what he considered ancient and more progressive systems of law. He had served in the British Empire, and in fact served in the government over the colonies in India. And his outlook on law is deeply informed both by history and by comparative law. Maine deserves to be considered one of the first sociologists of law. He's interested in the connections between law and society and the kinds of law systems that are created by certain kinds of societies. And so Maine reflects on what he calls the ancient law. And he does so principally through the lens of Roman law. His 1861 book, The Ancient Law, makes one profound argument that the history of legal systems from more primitive to more progressive is a movement from status to contract. And this is the most famous claim of Henry Sumner Main and certainly of the ancient law, that the history of law should be seen as a movement from status to contract. And think about what he means when you read him and think about this. And think about what he means as you consider his arguments. Status is a way of organizing rights and obligations that is characteristic of more simple societies. Contract is a way of organizing rights and obligations that is more characteristic of advanced societies. And this is a distinction that we'll continue to come back to as we think about the history of law and justice in the context of the modern world and the ways that the rise of industrial capitalism separates the modern world from the ancient world. Maine gives very powerful expression to this difference by this construct, saying that ancient law systems tend to organize rights and obligations around status and modern ones around contract. Now, what does this mean? Our whole way of life is shot through with contractual relationships. Almost every relationship you have, with a distinction that I'll come back to, is grounded in the idea of contract a voluntary agreement to structure that relationship. And in fact, we think of a contract as a kind of document that you sign agreeing to buy or sell something, to borrow money, to marry someone, that you voluntarily create relationships through an act of will, through an act of conscious volition. Ancient societies, he says, are very different in that they organize relationships, rights and obligations according to status. In other words, that the kinds of rights and obligations you have in your community originate out of your person, the, the status, the place that you hold in that society, not out of any voluntary act, but out of the very virtue of being who you are. Your relationship to those around you is eminent. It's part, it's built into your place in society. So your rights and obligations derive out of your status, not any conscious voluntary decision that you made, but rather your place in that society. And Maine sees ancient societies as structured by status relationships. And he sees more progressive societies as structured by more voluntary contractual. And so he sees this distinction, which has gradations, of course, from status to contract as the movement of law systems towards more sophistication. And in fact, he believes that the Roman law system makes some of this movement already in the ancient world from a more status-based to a more voluntaristic contractual set of relationships.